Hello, my name is Eddie Tofpik. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here is your weekly technical analysis of Paris Rapeseed, Winnipeg Canola and Malaysian Palm Oil Markets. I'll start with Paris Rapeseed. Okay, as I said six weeks ago here and ever since, two things are to note. Firstly, if we set aside the island bottom in June, then we have an ascending triangle formed from March to mid-August, of which we've seen a breakout over the upper trend line currently at 5.72 and three quarters nine weeks ago. This had a provisional target X in the 6.17 and a half area, which was a big ask at the time, but which came true three weeks ago. The second pattern was to look at the action since April this time, exclusive again of the island bottom as a possible bull channel. This pattern had a provisional target X1 in the 6.14 and three quarter area, which also came true three weeks ago. That's what I left you with the last five times. Since then, specifically four weeks ago, prices have broken higher. This break upwards gave me a chance to tidy up my daily chart, leaving only one pattern behind, the 100% projected Fibonacci line at 6.43 and three quarters. Now, this 100% projected Fibonacci line was reached two weeks ago. It looked like we might be starting to run out of potential targets on the top side. Yet this tidy up also revealed another separate rising wedge pattern. This one originated from the June high and low, and interestingly started at the island bottom. This separate, small, rising wedge reached its apex at the end of last week. We had a break higher from this pattern four weeks ago for initial target X2 in the 656 area, which was another big ask at the time, yet this was achieved two weeks ago. The next pattern that presented itself was a recent September based ascending broadening wedge pattern, currently 692 and a half to 737. On Monday last week, the market broke out of the downside of this pattern. Now, I'd previously detailed what you could expect in the event of a break lower, moved down to the 587 and a half area. However, as we've seen last week, this market made a false break lower. And perhaps more importantly, it may have made a possible bullish halfway hesitation. If you take into account the action from mid-September today, if that turns out to be the case, then we could see an upside target for such a move in the 7.30 area. It is still too early to be sure about that, but it is well worth pre being prepared in case the market does ride up, rise up to the 7.30 area. And that is actually not that far coincident from the new projected 50% Fibonacci line at 7.33 and a half. Finally, I'm very tempted to draw a new mid-September to early October bullish Andrews pitchfork. I have for the moment held off doing so, but I thought I ought to tell you how very much I have been tempted to do so. Winnipeg Canola. There are, as I've previously said on many occasions here, two patterns showing, both having run to fruition. Up until last week, both seemingly had not yet shown a sign of which would be the more dominant. However, it seems now that they are both acting in concert together. Let me explain. We have a descending triangle from early July and a sideways triangle also from July. The upper trend line for both is the same, the May to date downtrend currently at uh, 8.56.5, the broken May to date out, uh, downtrend I should say. The market broke higher over this three weeks ago. Now for the descending triangle we have a base on the congestion between 8.19 even to 8.19.40. Now I have to add a caveat here, since I first started to look at this as an idea I've, I've been underwhelmed by it. I'm not happy about this pattern, I would rather call it a smaller descending triangle from mid-August with the same downtrend for ease of use and a base on the 840 area. The second pattern, this sideways triangle, has, or should I say had, an uptrend breached five and six weeks ago, currently at 910. Uh, this breach had, and is, an odd one, as prices had initially moved sideways but then started moving along up this uptrend which we have done as recently as this past Monday. Three weeks ago, I gave some levels on the upside. These are still valid. So to recap, for the new smaller descending triangle, I gave an initial topside target X2 in the 930.80 area and the secondary target X3 in the 946.5 area. For the ragged sideways triangle, I gave an initial target, potential target X4 in the 968 area and a secondary target X5 at the height of the market in the 1008 area. To be honest, I had not been in love with any of these three patterns, but of the three, the smaller descending triangle with an upside target in the 930 area seemed the most likely. 
I'd also like to remind you that secondary targets are extremely hard to fulfill anywhere. Anyway, over the last few days things have become a little clearer and also a little bit more foggy as well. Let me explain. Targets X2 and X3 have been achieved on Tuesday and Wednesday of this week. The next target X4 on the upside is just beyond the 50% projected Fibonacci line at 956.5 and, and I suspect this might be the next overhead resistance. This market would have to tackle. Yesterday was the closest whole day would come towards it and the highest since May. Today was the highest open since May and a higher high but it is an important but. But the market has turned lower such that if we close tonight below 932.10 well, then we would have a key reversal down today right at the top of the market and maybe even a possible pipe top. This action I believe is solely due to prices coming so close to the 50% projected Fibonacci line overhead Thus, we'll have to now perhaps look to the fractured uptrend currently at 9.10.10 as perhaps a refuge from this possibly bearish action today. Bursa Malaysia Crude Palm Oil First off, please continue to try and ignore the colour changes in the labels on the daily chart. There is no special significance to them, it's just my charting system playing silly buggers again. Anyway, four weeks ago, the move down stopped short of testing the congestion support between 410.10 and 390.39.53. 40.10.10 and 39.53. The support had at the time concealed within it the rising long moving average, currently 41.33. This halt and reversal back up with gaps set the stage for the start of another move, a move I had intimated weeks beforehand. See, so if you cast your mind back, the move up from the low to the high four weeks ago gave us a weekly key reversal up that very week. Additionally, the follow on higher in the following weeks, especially the gapping moves higher, gave us a rare monthly key reversal up in September as well. So why are these so anticipated and important in my eyes, other than on their own as standout patterns? Well, it's because a little while ago I laid out a scenario for potentially a very, very large bullish pattern. It's to look at the whole of the May to day action, including the sideways weeks over August and September, as an extended V bottom. Now, this pattern is not that common, but here it does have some heavy merit, and by heavy I mean some really heavy merit. So, to give an idea of the potential for the move higher, Let's look at to the action since the low of July up to the high in August as the size of the potential move that may happen. Thus, it could be quite large and it could also still be seen separately as a simple bull flag stroke bullish halfway hesitation as well. However, if it is the larger extended V pattern, then it will have the backing of not just of the June today action, but all the action since May. That is quite a lot. Quite a lot. I spelt out the idea of the move last week and I quote an initial idea on the action just being a large bull flag stroke bullish halfway hesitation well that gives a potential target X in the 5375 area way above the, the current top of the market and a very very big ask yeah she was off the top of my chart as well at the time but I'm not going to go into that too much until we see prices approach target X end of quote I have since condensed the move of the daily chart such that you can see target X in the 53.75 area and target X1 in the 55.25 area. These are by no means a done deal, as I will shortly explain, but they do give an idea of what a ginormous move I was going on about. Before that, let me lay out some certainties that are still valid. The first is that the bullish Andrews pitchfork for the 2021 action, and especially the middle time, currently at 49.24, still seems to be the main bullish incentive here. My drawing of this bullish Andrews pitchfork so many weeks ago had been a bit of speculation on my part at the time, but it is still maintaining its validity and prominent bullishness. The second is to discuss and regard the very recent mid-September today action as a bull channel, currently 5085 to 5493. This still seems to have some merit, but is being plagued right now. The plague happened last night and it came in the form of an outside day and a bear combined with a bearish dark cloud cover pattern. Given what has happened elsewhere, it will be interesting to see the next few sessions actions. Will this be the high water mark for this market? Only 50 odd ringgits short from target X and arguably reaching it. 
I'll be very interested to see what will be next. Just remember, the rock of this market is still the bullish Andrews pitchfork drawn back in June. Until that is broken, altered or replaced, then it will still be the driving force in this market higher. Thank you for listening. This weekly broadcast gives you essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted with this broadcast. Copyright is Eddie Topic and ADM Investor Services International Limited. And here comes the final bit.